Okay, I'm going to try and do part three. It's getting a little late. So we went part one, which was a multiple choice for this January 2019 physics uh, IAL International A-level edX cell unit one mechanics and material. This was the first ever exam taken uh, for the um, new specification. So we went through the multiple choice and hopefully you gave me a like. Um, and I've got some more subscribers as a result. Multiple choice was done. I went through the a mark scheme, told you to check it. And we went through questions 11 and 12. Yeah, here was 11, that was 12. So you've got to go find these in the um, previous videos. We went through question 13 only to find I did this, so we, we looked at all the forces and we worked out the missing distance to force B, which was 0.86 meters, only to find that there is a part um, after that, part B, but here's the mark scheme, so we went through this. So if you want to do 13A, that's the bit I did with you. 13B, you see I noticed we haven't done the last two marks of question 13, okay, which we'll have a look at. And then after that is question 14. So I'll try and do 13 and 14, finish it uh, before tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be busy because extra um, evening parents meeting for next year's year 12. Students who want you to stay on or from other schools. So this question 14 is a quality of written communication. So when there's an asterisk, yeah, by the number it means that they want you to um, write your answers very clearly coherently logically and they explain the mark scheme how they give you the marks um, when they're looking at how well you've explained it so it's about egg it's about the density why old eggs float okay so then then they got looking for the indicative content at the bottom of how you get the six marks so you can stop the video and read how they do that okay this is the end of question 13 so if they if they move bracket b yeah if it's moved closer to the left hand of the shelf that's the support um explain the effect of the magnitude of the normal contact force so how will it change the reaction the size of the force if bracket B is moved closer to the left-hand end. Well, the moments must still balance clockwise and anti-clockwise. Yeah, that's what we have to assume. So the moment due to FB must still remain the same to keep the whole thing balanced. Okay, so that's the first thing you've got to, to mention. Yeah, so uh, otherwise the, the shelf will fall down. Yeah, it will topple. Since X is decreased to the distance from the left-hand side to um, bracket B, since you've, you're decreasing it by moving it closer to the end, the normal contact force at B must increase to compensate for the lower distance because remember, moment, moments are the force times the distance, okay? So you have to keep the force, the new force, times the new distance uh, the same as it was uh, uh, with the old values. So that's how you explain the two marks. And that's the end of the seven mark question for moments. Okay, that's a useful revision. And here is the quality of written communication regarding the eggs. So it says the approximate age of an egg can be determined by placing it in a bowl of water. Yeah, two eggs of different ages are placed in water and come to rest as shown. And you can actually do this, so old eggs will float. The question is why? They want you to analyze the physics behind it. The internal structure of an egg is shown, yeah? Um, so it looks like there's always an air cell at the one end of the egg, yeah? And then it says a, a student reached, uh, re searched, researched on the internet to find the reason why old eggs float. Yeah, in other words, research the science behind it. He found um, the following two statements on different websites. The first one says, old eggs float 
because as the egg ages, it starts to decompose. As it uh, decomposes, gases are produced that escape through the eggshell. Okay, so that's theory one. And statement two is, as the egg ages, air enters the egg through the eggshell and increases the size of the air cell. And the larger air cell acts as a flotation device and hence the old egg or old eggs float. Well, they both sound very plausible, okay? Uh, but then here it says, uh, assess which of these statements uh, is correct. Well, statement one is about gases escaping. Well, if gases are escaping, that means you're losing some mass from the inside of the egg. And if statement two, air enters, then that implies that you're adding more mass inside the egg. Yeah, because basically air will have some mass uh, in it. Okay, so we then have to assume in both cases that the volume doesn't change. The volume of the egg stays the same, okay? It doesn't shrink or expand. So upthrust, which is linked to the volume of water displaced, will stay constant. So it's four marks already, yeah? So upthrust is U. Statement one, weight is decreasing, means that weight will be less than the upthrust because the upthrust hasn't changed if the volume hasn't changed, okay? So the egg should float as there will be a resultant force upwards because the upthrust is bigger than the weight because in statement one, gases are escaping. So it should start to float. Yeah, it should start to move up the, to the surface of the water. State, uh, or use opposite argument for statement two. You could then go and explain statement two. Statement one is therefore correct, yeah? Statement two must be incorrect because statement two, if we did the opposite argument, statement two, the weight um, would increase. And if the weight increase and upthrust hasn't changed because the volume hasn't changed, then uh, st statement two would imply the egg will not be able to float because it's got heavier and the upthrust hasn't changed. So statement two, again, is incorrect. And that's how you get one, two, three, four, five, six, according to the content they're looking for. But they don't, they don't just simply give you the six marks because you've made those six points. They're looking for the linkage in your thinking, how clearly you seem to have understood it. So they're looking, so they'll give you four marks for making these kind of points but then they give you two marks for how well they think you've put your argument across. Hope that makes sense. So that's the question 14, which is a six marker, yeah? And um, I said, no, to explain the marking of six mark responses. You need depth, you need detail, you need clarity in your reasoning. It has to be logical the way you've explained it. So any confusion could lose you a mark, okay? But I think if you put it in this, in this way um, and you've explained the links between the different bullet points that I've put in, you will get six marks, okay? Now, the next question is about momentum and I'm gonna start it, but I might not finish it because it's now um, after 9 p.m. Okay, so it says P and Q are identical spheres. So I'm gonna explain the concept to you uh, and then we'll see how far we get. Sphere P in the diagram, yeah, before the collision, moves along a smooth horizontal surface and collides with sphere Q, which is initially stationary. After the collision, sphere P moves off with a momentum of 0 0.096 uh, kilogram meters per second in a direction of 15 degrees to its initial direction, so slightly up the page and sphere Q moves off with a momentum of slightly more 0.14 kilograms meters per second in a direction 10 degrees below the horizontal line, the dotted line, okay? So they want you to draw a scale drawing of these vectors. So basically momentum 
is a vector quantity. So you've got to use a scale, a vector diagram, a, draw, a vector diagram drawn exactly to scale using those horrible numbers they're giving you, 0 0.96 and 0 0.14 kilograms per meter per second. And they want you to use a protractor and a ruler to do it as accurately as you can. Um, so you've got to use the, the scale drawing to show that the magnitudes, the size of the total momentum of P and Q added together, yeah, um, is about 0.2 kilograms meters per second. So how do you add vectors? You basically take the second vector, which is say Q, and you just add it onto the first vector. Say the lengths are drawn accurately. They're not because the diagram here is not drawn accurately. But say they were, yes? Yeah? So you take the P direction as is shown, and then you add the Q direction, 10 degrees, and Q is longer, but at 10 degrees, you've got to make sure the angle's right. And if you do it accurately, when you add them up, they will, should go along the dotted line. Why should they go along the dotted line? So imagine this would be Q. So I haven't drawn it accurately. This would be Q. And this would be P. You add the second vector onto the end. It should go along the dotted line because initially P was moving straight forwards. And of course, if the two vectors P and Q add up, after the collision, it should be the same as the momentum before the collision because momentum must be conserved. Hope that makes sense to you. So I didn't have a ruler or a protractor with me when I wrote my handwritten questions out. So they want you to use this graph paper to make the scale as accurate as you can to show that the addition will be a horizontal on this axis and B, that you can choose the scale accurately. If you can't, you will lose some of the marks. So let's have a look at the mark scheme because they've done it on a mark scheme. So you get one mark. Let's just do it step by step. One mark, construction of a correct vector diagram, parallelogram, yeah? Or you can do a triangle. You don't have to, the way I did it was a triangle, yeah? So I drew it as a triangle, yeah? Going, going up this way and then Q going the other way. And that's the triangle, which is half a parallelogram, okay? The triangle rule or the parallelogram rule where you do it as a quad. So you construct a correct vector diagram, um, parallelogram or triangle with all three directions, 0 0.096 and 0 0.14 kilogram labeled. So you've got to label them to get the first mark and then add up the two momenta. Yeah, momenta is plural for momentum. The two momenta correctly scaled, yes, the ratio must be 0.14 to 0 0.096, yeah? Um, I don't know what they're saying, rounds to between 1.4 and 1.5. I don't know what that means. I have to work it out. So as long as the scale is ratio of 0.14 to 0 0.096, you choose your scale. That's just a scale drawing. They do scale drawings in geography, don't they? So it shouldn't be too difficult for most intelligent students who are in A-level. And then the horizontal resultant, yeah, should be drawn um, to within a slope of one small, scare, uh, one small square. So if you're off by more than one small square, you will lose the accuracy mark for drawing the addition of the two vectors. That means your scale hasn't been drawn exactly right or you haven't measured the angles accurately or something along those lines. So they're checking the accuracy of your scale drawing. And then the total momentum of the resultant line should be about 0.22 to 0.24 in kilograms meters per second on the scale that you've shown. Okay, so it's basically, can you draw um, a parallelogram or a rectangle or a triangle um, accurately with the scales, uh, the numbers they're giving you. And they're deliberately giving you 0 0.096 and 0 0.14 to make it not easy, to makes you think mathematically carefully. And it says, do not award the fourth mark if, the, if, the stu if it's shown that the student has done it by calculation rather than from um, an accurate scale drawing, okay? So you won't get a fourth mark if there's anything wrong with your scale drawing or you've done it uh, try to calculate it, okay? 
So if you did it properly, there is what it should look like. Yeah. So you could draw, you could measure if, I don't know if there's is a scale drawing because I haven't done it on the graph paper. So you're doing it on the graph paper. And it, it should look something like that. There's the parallelogram method. I just drew the top half of that, which is a triangle. Yeah. So well, you, you have to do it accurately. And the student does accurately will get four marks. And uh, students who do it less accurately could get three or two marks, etc. Okay, so if you don't know how to do par uh, the parallelogram rule, you need to go and look up the chapter in your textbook where it shows you how to do scale drawings. I remember doing it when we were doing it in class um, a couple of months ago. Uh, part B of 15 is about the conservation of momentum, and part C is working out the missing velocity, presumably of um, one of the um, particles or balls. Okay, then we got question 16, which goes into v squared equals u squared plus 2as, which I don't think I'm going to go into. But let's try and finish uh, 15. It says, state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. And this is what you should always say. Yeah? The first line is important. It says, provided no other external forces are acting on the system. Yeah? then the total momentum before a collision is equal to the total momentum after a collision. And the first bit is something you just got to learn is the accurate way of doing it. Because obviously if other forces were involved, yeah, it means we haven't taken into everything into account. And this is called a closed system. So the principle of conservation of momentum it applies in a closed system where you're only looking at those objects. No, no other uh, forces come into effect. Okay? It then says calculate the initial velocity of sphere P. Yes, we'd have to go back to the diagram and look at it. We know the mass of uh, P is given as 0.12 kilograms, and we were told that they are identical spheres. So you then do the conservation of momentum. The momentum before must equal the momentum after. Um, and from part A, I think you have been given the momentum as being 0.23. Yes, so from your scale drawing, I think they mean. So the momentum after should be about 0.23. I've taken the middle value, that you, depending on your scale drawing. Whatever value you put in, you can use that to get an answer. And if you put that in, knowing the mass is 0.12 kilograms, you divide 0.23 by 0.12, and it comes out to... Uh, 1.92 to three significant figures, and then you round it up to two significant figures, yeah, because the data provided is two significant figures. And there is the um, question uh, 15, is that? So yes, 15, eight marks, question done. So I hope we're making progress slowly through this, because I'm trying to do these in the, in the evening after a full day of work. So it's, um, I'm trying to get them ready for my students, um, I don't see them until a few days' time, and they're practicing using this as just a practice exam. So when they've done a question, they can go to the look at the um, my answers and see where they've gone wrong and how they can improve their communication skills. So if you're in other schools and you're watching these videos, yeah, again, please give it a like, share it with your friends, spread the word, and make sure you're subscribed because more of these videos are coming your way. Yes, and now is the time for preparation for the January exams. So I'll be uploading more and more videos. Um, I've got some ready actually, but I haven't written them out in neat. So you should, I want to make sure you can read my writing. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.